In this video we're going to create a key store and a certificate for a queue manager. So let's go ahead and see if that queue manager has any certificate already created. So queue manager name is JMS Demo. We go to its SSL directory and we see that it is empty. So let's go ahead and create the key database and then we'll create the uh, certificate for that queue manager. Now the runmq akm command, these are the same uh, commands that you would use in a Unix or Linux system. Uh, there's uh, the key database command. There's always an object and an action. So the object is key database or certificate. The action is to create or list or export. So we're going to create a self-signed certificate. And then of course we have to be able to list the details of the certificate, list all the certs in the key store, uh, and eventually we have to extract that certificate so that we can take it over to Explorer and use it there. Now a cool new feature of GSKit is this random create. This will give us a nice cryptographically strong uh, password. So if we just type random create uh, the object in the action and then hit enter we're going to get all the different options. So let's specify a length of 64. That's a nice long password. And dash strong says give me a set of characters that's uh, wider than the uh, standard set. And we don't want to type that puppy so we're just going to copy it out real quick. Now let's go ahead and create our key store. Our KDB. So we're going to use the dash kdb dash create command and of course you got to specify the uh, several things here so if we just hit enter again it gives us all the different options that we need so uh, run mqm kdb create specify the database and here's that big honking password we created a minute ago now we got to go back and escape the quote marks if this were unix or linux you would probably want to escape that uh, dollar sign and uh, any back ticks and things like that. Um, but rather than deleting them and having a shorter password, keep them in, have it long as it we started with, and have it as complex as we started with. Um, that's, you know, why we did that in the first place. And definitely type dash dash, because we never want to type that again. If we use dash FIPS, then all of the ephemeral products of the cryptographic operations that would be in memory or on disk, um, the FIPS libraries make sure that those are never uh, uh, saved in memory or disk. They wipe over that storage before it's released. Now let's go ahead and list. And we see that new key database that we created has no certificates in it. It's not populated. The old version would have filled it up with, uh, the old version of GSKit would have filled it up with a whole bunch of commercial certificates, which meant essentially this thing would by default trust the world. And then we have to take our time to go back and delete them. So here um, it's populated empty, and now we're going to create our certificate. We definitely need the label. We definitely need the distinguished name. And then there's a bunch of other things here that say optional. It's not optional as in you could do without expiry. It's optional as in it will pick one for you, and it's one you probably don't want. So we're going to go ahead and specify, and definitely going to specify the signature algorithm so that we can use some of these nice SHA-2 um, algorithms that are available to us now. And we definitely want the CA false to make sure that this certificate can't sign any other certificates. So now that we know what we need, let's go ahead and start typing in the command to create that certificate. So we're going to do cert create. And of course we have to tell it where it's going to put it and what it's going to be called. So uh, we're going to use IBM WebSphere MQ and the queue manager name, all one word, all lowercase, and that's a mandatory standard. That is how the queue manager finds out which certificate in the key store, if there's more than one personal cert, which one it is supposed to use for itself. Definitely specify stash. That stashed option is coming in uh, looking real valuable about now, isn't it? Um, Two-year expiry. Size of 2048 is the smallest you'd want to use these days. 4096 would be better. So under the common name, uh, it used to be you just put the queue manager name. All commercial CAs are now requiring you to use an externally resolvable domain. So uh, this instead of example.com, you would use, you know, your uh, domain name of your company.com. And then under OU, um, I like to put a few different OUs here so that we can use SSL peer and channel auth rules to filter the kind of things that we'll accept. So. Uh, uh, whoops, that's not an admin. I want uh, this is a queue manager, I'm creating a certificate for a queue manager. And if I actually put that in the OU, 
obviously you could make a rule that says on this particular channel only accept certificates that are associated with queue managers. Now under the organizational name, um, put uh, your organization. Again, if you're using a commercial CA, this must match what is in your domain name record that you used in the common name. Now the other thing is with the new version of GSKit I can put an email. So if, for example, so I have an external business partner that is uh, seeing this and they want to know how to get in touch with me if uh, something's wrong with the certificate or the connection, there is an email address. Now it says email. Note later when we display it, it says mail. It's a slight discrepancy in how it's input versus how it's displayed. So just be aware of that. We're going to see that later. Now once you get it, look it over because if you missed anything, um, you're not going to have another chance to make it right, especially if you're creating a certificate signing request instead of a self-signed certificate. So there we go. Let's go back to our list command. And this shows us that, yes indeed, we now have a certificate called IBM WebSRAM QJMS Demo. So in addition to seeing that it's there, let's take a look at the details. You always want to go back over your certificate and make sure that it is what you we're expecting uh, one last check of things like the distinguished name uh, because at this point you can just delete it and recreate it if it's wrong. So see here we've got uh, our label, IBM Web Serum QJMS Demo, our key size of 2048. Note the serial number and the issuer and subject are the same because it's self-signed and there's our validity dates. And there's one thing missing if you scroll down, you'll see that nowhere in the certificate does it say CA false. And as I mentioned before, that's real important, and I wanted to show this to you uh, because I want to show you what a certificate looks like with and without that value. Let's go ahead and delete it, and we're going to recreate it. Yep, no more certificates, and then we'll recreate it, and now we're going to specify CA false. Well, let's uh, specify a false in lowercase. There we go. Okay, now we've recreated that certificate. When we list it, that's the details. First of all, let's scroll to the top, and you can see that, in fact, there's a different um, serial number, there's uh, different validity dates, and then down here at the bottom, basic constraints, CA false. And note that that's a critical constraint. And what that means is that no legitimate software will ever allow this certificate to sign another, nor will legitimate software ever accept a certificate signed by this uh, if you found something that could use this as a signer. It's very important to check when you get a certificate from somebody else to make sure that it says, if it's self-signed, that that's CA false. Now, of course, we have to use it, so let's get it out. And then we'll take that certificate and we'll get it over to Explorer. So we're going to use the cert extract command. Got to specify the database. Got to tell it which certificate in the database. And of course we're going to say dash stashed. So we don't have to type that big honk and long password. And of course we also have to tell it where to put the file. I'm specifying jmsdemo.arm. I usually use the common name in the certificate so that when you get a bunch of these things in a folder that uh, you can tell them apart. And always specify format ASCII because uh, Java does not like the uh, binary format on these certificates. So there we go. Um, let's take a look at the directory. There's our file that we just created. And if we uh, display that, that's the actual uh, text. Now you could copy that into uh, another file or you can go out to the file system and grab the file that was created and we're going to copy that over to Explorer. Join us in the next video and we'll see what we do with that.